Hey guys, welcome back to Hope with Jonathan podcast. And I'm doing a live stream as well on YouTube. So guys, welcome back to Hope with Jonathan, where we try to give uh, patients uh, hope, uh, hope for uh, hope for life, uh, hope for uh, kidney uh, transplant, and just uh, all around just trying to give someone uh, hope, hope to hang on to and hope to believe in. Uh, that's the goal of this show. Uh, today, I'd like to discuss uh, a topic with you guys uh, regarding home hemodialysis. And so let's let's start at the beginning. So you go to the doctor and you get diagnosed with kidney disease, right? And then, you know, uh, as things progress, you end up getting told that, you know, you're probably going to need to go ahead and go on dialysis, right? And then, you know, in a lot of cases, some people end up in an emergency situation where they have to have dialysis. And so here's the situation. You end up on dialysis. And the first thing they want to do is they want to put you on, on in center at a, a location. And they want to they want to put you there. OK. And where you're going to be uh, going in. Three, three days a week, usually three to four hours uh, per session. And, uh, you know, you're going to be going there uh, either on a, a schedule of like uh, MWF, which is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or you're going to be on a TTS, which is Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. OK. And, uh, you know, it becomes a grind where you are stuck on that schedule. Once they fit you into a chair time, Usually that's your chair time. You're not going to be able to, you know, uh, change it unless somebody, you know, decides to leave their spot for whatever reason that that may be. Uh, they might decide to, uh, you know, uh, give up their chair time or, or whatever happens. You, you may uh, get, uh, you know, the opportunity to get some chair time. But other than that, uh, you know, you're you're basically stuck on that schedule. And so uh, myself personally, I was on TTS in DeVita and uh, the grind became uh, kind of a, you know, where I felt stuck and I felt like I was in the position where, you know, it was like, I don't know, you know, I, I got to go in here every Saturday. Yeah, every Saturday. And, you know, it, it became the, the reality of that was just uh, kind of mind blowing as it was. Uh, going on dialysis as it was, was already a, uh, a grind uh, in itself, uh, especially in center dialysis. But uh, going on, uh, you know, the thought of possibility of something else just at the time when I first started going to dialysis, I had no clue about home, home hemodialysis. Uh, now, this show is going to be about home hemodialysis. There are other forms. There's another form of dialysis that you can do at home called uh, peritoneal uh, dialysis. And um, though that, that type of process is a completely different process. It's it's, you know, a, a dialysis uh, through a, a, a line uh, in the in the uh, abdomen uh, that, uh, you know, they use to hook up to. And uh, usually it's a, you know, a longer uh, time on the machine, usually done at night. Uh, I believe when people are sleeping or resting, uh, some some go for even longer. Uh, some have to do like uh, like I've, I've read people's page, you know, and that's the thing about uh, dialysis and treatment for it is like each patient I'm, I'm learning is that is each patient is unique and each one has their own, uh, you know, different, uh, uh, you know, styles of, uh, of way they're treated and their prescriptions are different and the way that they're uh, treated. Uh, with different, you know, supplements and medicines and every, no, no two patients are the same. I'm sure that if, you know, a couple out of a couple of thousand probably would be the same, but uh, you know, you're just your average uh, dialysis patients, like each one has got their own, it's, you know, their own separate uh, type of way that they're being treated because their bodies are requiring uh, different uh, supplements and different uh, types of medicines that, you know, in different ways of treatment. Uh, there's different baths, uh, different ways to, uh, you know, do dialysis or, or uh, wash your, uh, cleanse your blood from the toxins, uh, you know. So, but uh, I was presented 
probably I, I was in center probably about six months or so. And then finally I was presented with the opportunity to uh, go on um, home hemo. And basically the home hemo was uh, presented to me uh, basically with a pamphlet and a brochure. And uh, the, the, uh, the, the brochure was basically handed to me. I was, I was given the brochure, uh, the pamphlet, or, you know, if you will. And basically I was told to, you know, hey, why don't you think about this? So I thought about it and I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll try it. I don't know. I'll go home and take a look. So here's what I did uh, before I decided to completely say, yes, I want to go on home hemo. I went home and did a lot of research. Let me let me stop right there and give you guys uh, a tip real quick. OK, on your treatments, you need to be knowledgeable of everything that's going on with you. Uh, you are your own best advocate. OK, you are in charge of knowing uh, what medications you're on, uh, what levels you're running uh, at, at dialysis as far as like your BFR, your blood flow rate. Uh, you know, uh, how they set up the machine, which dialyzer you're on. There's different size dialyzers. Uh, what, what medications do they give you? What supplements? Uh, Epigen, uh, Venifer, which is iron, an iron supplement. Uh, things like that. I mean, you just, you need to be knowledgeable of it. Um, I can't believe, you know, there's so many patients out there that just don't know. And they, you know, it, it makes it harder for them to be uh, you know, treat it. So it's best for you as a patient to be knowledgeable of all of your uh, medications, especially on when you're on dialysis. Uh, you know, and if you don't know, ask questions. Hey, your uh, local uh, center should be answering any question that you have, especially when it's coming to your health. Now, what I'd like to uh, present and, you know, tell you guys uh, about uh, the way that I went on home hemo is, is I went home and did my due diligence and I actually did research on, you know, home hemodialysis. And uh, I watched the YouTube videos and the YouTube videos, uh, the, the name of the company was uh, Next Stage. OK, so I went home and watched as many Next Stage videos because I was interested. I wanted to know exactly what I was getting involved in. So what I did was I went home, uh, watched as many YouTube videos as I could, and then I presented it to my wife because my center now, I, I want to tell everybody out there, there are people out there that are on home hemodialysis uh, that stick themselves. They are their own caretaker and they take care of themselves, okay? My center was different. They would not allow me to go on home hemodialysis without a caretaker. OK, so let me I'll make that point right away. So I had to get my wife on board before they would even train train us to go on home hemodialysis. OK, so I got my wife on board. And how I did that was I presented her with the pamphlet. I told her this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to get out of center. Uh, right around the time that uh, I decided this, I basically, you know, at the time I, I felt like there was a need for it and something was calling to me to do it because of the way that COVID had came in. So COVID had came in. Uh, there was also some very sickly patients in my center uh, that I would come in and in and out, you know, behind after they would leave. I would coming in behind them and, you know. I started thinking about flu season and things like this. And it wasn't that my center wasn't, you know, trying to be sterile or any of that. But I, you know, along with the schedule that I was on TTS and along with worried about catching COVID, catching the flu, I decided that in my best interest that if I was going to do dialysis, I was going to do it on my own free will and my own way. OK, uh, you know, basically a big screw you to the way that, you know, you're kind of impressed to just go in center. So had I, I I'm, I'm just being real with you with that, you know, when I say that. But 
because I wasn't, I didn't have the opportunity because of the way that I, I came into dialysis. Uh, I was, I ended up being uh, staff flighted to the hospital, basically woke up in the ICU. Everybody out there pretty much knows my story. Uh, you know, I was about 30 minutes from death and I woke up on dialysis. So I had no time to really prep and prepare. Had I done everything right, and been going to the doctors and been able to prepare for a, uh, you know, for the process of dialysis, uh, probably would have advocated right away for a kidney, uh, for a kidney donor before I even went on dialysis. And then I would have probably opted for home hemo right away. Uh, I do not think I would have been able to do PD, nothing against PD. I just, I felt like home hemo was the way that I needed to go. And, and that's what was good for me. Uh, PD is an amazing uh, way to treat dialysis, especially at home. Uh, anybody that's on PD, uh, congrats to you if it works for you. See, I'm kind of like one of these people that say, you know, hey, whatever works for you, whatever gets the job done. Hey, if that's what's best for you and uh, and, you know, to get your treatment, to get your blood cleansed. Uh, so that you you know you'll stay alive and all that. Hey, that's great. Uh, for me, it was home hemo uh, or hemo dialysis at first, and then home hemo. Uh, of course, now I've been transplanted for two months. I received my gift of life uh, August 11th of uh, 2020. Uh, thank you, God. Thanks all, all praise and all thanks be to God. But I want to uh, let you know, you know, I I, I did my due diligence. Um, and I, I really researched it out, okay? And uh, like I said, my wife got on board and they brought us in and they trained us. Uh, and the training lasts about three weeks for us, okay? Uh, and, you know, we were given books and binders and, you know, basically every day was like a class. Um, we would go in and the uh, nurse there uh, eventually, you know, like the first couple of days, she showed us, you know, showed my wife all the steps and uh, all the uh, things that you needed to do to uh, prep and, you know, learn how to use the machine, uh, showed her some alarms, uh, showed her how to load the cartridge in the machine, showed her how to prime the machine, uh, showed us how to hang the bags of dialysate, uh, showed us how to, uh, you know, hang the saline bags, get all the tubes hooked up um, and all that. You know, it's a process. Um, don't go into home hemo thinking that it's easy. Uh, it is easy if you follow the steps. But uh, my, my number one uh, thing for you, if you are contemplating uh, this, this is just my tips. OK, uh, from what I've seen from my short period of time on home hemodialysis, if you are going to opt for home hemodialysis, Here's a few tips that you, and some uh, great, uh, you know, just words of, of, of knowledge and wisdom for you, okay? Um, just to help you out. Number one, you're going to have to be willing to learn, okay? You got to be willing to listen and learn. And if you're a stubborn type patient or you just don't want to listen or you just don't want to, uh, sit through, you know, a nurse telling you how to do things uh, and you just want to sit back and let somebody else do it for you, then that's probably, it's probably best for you to stay in center. I wouldn't go on home hemo. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even try it uh, because you're going to need to listen to all the steps to learn how to prep and set up the machine. You're going to need to know the alarms in case alarms go off. You're going to need to know how all the steps and procedures that be taken off of the machine. Uh, you're going to need to know how to clean up after the machine, after you after you run dialysis on the machine. OK, you're going to have to be sterile and you're going to have to know the steps of how to clean up. Um, you're you're you know, you're you're also number two. Let me give you this tip. You're going to have to have room in your uh, home or apartment, wherever you're living, okay, uh, you're going to receive a lot of supplies. That's the reason why I say that. You're going to receive a lot of supplies. Usually they want to keep you within a like a two-week schedule. Um, 
Some of them, some people get them monthly. Okay. But I got, I had to do five bags per treatment. Okay. So what I ended up doing was I had to have like, I think my first order that came to the house here was 74 boxes. Uh, and about 50 of those was dialysate. Okay. Um, the, some of the boxes that showed up here, um, uh, were, you know, pretty good size boxes, uh, at first, you know, and I had to have room to, to store them. I ended up cleaning out a closet in the hallway and that's where I use, I had basically a medical closet. Now I will tell you, I have a three bedroom, two bath apartment. So, uh, it's about 1100 square feet, I believe. Um, but I have also, I have a family. There's four of us that live here. It's me, my wife, my two children. So you have to keep in mind that if you're deciding to contemplating on going on home hemo, you need to make sure that you have the room and the space for it, for the machine, uh, the, uh, all the supplies and, you know, um, a room to basically either set it all up in. Um, you don't want to have everything kind of sporadically and, uh, you know, just spread out. You want everything to kind of be together because you may need gauze. You may need uh, saline. You may need a syringe. You may need, uh, you know, you need, you may need some alcohol pads. You may need gloves. Uh, there's just so many things that you may need on hand. Okay. Uh, you may need a bag of fluid. Um, you know, it, it's, it's great to be organized. So that's my next point. Number three, you got to be willing to be organized. Uh, organization is a big thing in doing home hemodialysis. Okay. Um, and probably in peritoneal dialysis, I, I'm sure most of the, some of these steps are great for that as well, but, uh, you need to be organized. Uh, when I would get my shipments, I would immediately organize my boxes of dialysate. Uh, I would uh, organize my, all my, uh, you know, stuff like my uh, heparin bottles, all my, uh, like my tourniquets, my gloves, my alcohol pads, um, my, uh, you know, like I said, gauze, all those types of things. They were all on hand. What I ended up doing for myself personally, I'm not saying this works for everybody. I went to a, local store here. Uh, it was a Harbor Freight and I bought a mechanic uh, dolly. Okay. A push cart. Okay. It's a push cart. It costs about $49, about $50. Okay. I'm not saying that's the price now. It's the one I found was $50. Okay. But we were able to put it together. It held my machine on the top and on the bottom, there was an area there that we could put all of our supplies. So I put I had my gloves, my heparin, my tourniquets, my syringes, uh, my alcohol pads, my pause pads, my uh, betadine, uh, my chucks pads, which are basically the blue. Uh, they're basically a sanitary uh, napkin, if you will, uh, to lay down, to lay all your supplies on in case you have to, uh, you know, you start leaking blood or you drip a little bit. There's something there to absorb the, uh, the blood. But. What I'm trying to say is, uh, you know, organization goes a long way. OK, as you can see, I'm a, I'm I was very organized. Uh, so this is another tip. So like let's say you, you do decide to go on home hemo. OK. And, you know, like I said, you get home, you get the machine, you uh, you get all organized and all that. And then, you know, you you realize that there's an alarm. OK, an alarm you don't recognize those alarms, uh, they should give you a book. OK, and the alarms are going off for a reason. OK, and a lot of times uh, there's a alarm for like uh, venous pressure, arterial pressure. Uh, there's just there's all kind of alarms. OK, there's an alarm for in case you're leaking, uh, like like the machine is dripping. Uh, leaking fluid. Uh, there's all kind of different alarms. Okay. And they'll give you a book, uh, a guidebook for that. There's also a phone number. And uh, next days was really good about, you know, answering the phone in case of an issue. Okay. So keep that in mind. So there's always resources. Uh, you should also have the phone number to your 
your nurse that trained you at your center. Uh, we had her uh, phone number. We always either could either text message her or call her in case we you know, had an issue. And she was more than willing to answer the phone. Um, so like I said, I've went over some of these tips. Um, also, I wanted to tell you about after, after your dialysis treatment. So, and this, is, this goes in the play in effect of being organized. Uh, after I would finish my treatments, I would not be done with my treatment until I set up for the next treatment. And the reason why is the main part, the main thing about your treatment and the main thing is going to take up a lot of time is your setup time. Okay. Number one, when you begin, you're going to have to prime the machine. Okay. That involves getting a cartridge, uh, hooking up your, uh, your lines, your connector lines, hooking up your, what they call the waistline, uh, hooking up your saline, and it all primes in the machine, the machine. And that takes usually 15, 20 minutes to prime. Okay. So that right there, there you go. Automatic 20 minutes. Okay. But in order to do that, if you don't have all the supplies laid out to do that, guess what? You're going to attack on about another 15. Okay. And as you already know, you're going to be on the machine at least, you know, two to three hours. Okay. Each prescription is different. Uh, for me, it was about three hours, okay? But what I'm telling you is, is at the end of your treatment, if you go get all those supplies, so here's what I would go get, okay? I would get a cartridge. I would get my connector lines. I would hang my bags of dialysate. I'd have my uh, waistline and the bag of saline. And after my wife would sterilize the machine, we would go ahead and hang all that and get it all ready only thing we wouldn't do is prime the machine. Okay. Only, that's the only thing we wouldn't do. Now my wife wouldn't hook up the connector lines and the waistline until the time that we was going to do treatment because of air. Okay. You do not want air in those lines. And uh, there's a, there's a technique to get the air out of the lines called snap and tap. And uh, that's what, that's what my facility called it. They called it snap and tap. So, you know, me and my wife kind of cut up about that whenever we would do it, it was, just, you know, snappy, Snap it and tap it, you know, what we called it. And uh, that was to ensure, uh, basically, it was, you know, one of these motions where you would really work each piece of that tubing and line to get that air out of there. Air is important to get out of the machine. Why? Because the air can go into your heart and cause, uh, you know, issues. You just don't want air uh, in any line when it's connected to your body, okay? Uh, can cause, uh, you know, major, major issues. You do not want that. Um, like I said, that goes back to, you know, the beginning when I told you, you got to be willing to listen uh, and you got to have room. You got to be willing to be organized and you got to, you know, have your supplies on hand and be ready. And then your prep, you need to prep. Make sure that, uh, you know, all your supplies are there. Uh, while my wife was priming the machine, what I would do is I would lay out the, uh, they call them chucks. And then I would put out the uh, tourniquet. I put out the heparin, the alcohol, the betadine, the uh, Paul's wipes that uh, they called them Paul's. Uh, they were basically antiseptic wipes uh, is what they were. Uh, and then I would lay it like lay out our gloves and, uh, you know, I, we would I would lay out everything that we needed. I'd have the blood pressure machine and uh, I'd go ahead and take my temperature uh, and we would uh, she would always uh, prep. I'd lay out the heparin bottle. She always prepped that. I'd get our syringes out and uh, I helped out as much as I could, you know, and I was the one that hung the dialysate bags because the dialysate bags are are not really that light. OK, uh, that's another Another thing that you got to be willing and not mindful about is, and just to let you guys know, if you do go on home hemodialysis, okay, you're going to end up getting a workout from lifting the boxes. And um, they are heavy, okay? They weigh anywhere between 25 and 30 pounds each. Um, each box of dialysate is about uh, two bags, okay? So it's two bags in there. Uh, at least for the home hemo patients. Um, they weighed, like I said, they were pretty, pretty heavy. 
And uh, after you moved about 10 of them, you, you was working up a pretty good sweat. Okay. Um, and I remember organizing about 40 of them here in the house, uh, 50, uh, if you give or take. And, uh, you know, it was after I was done, especially whenever I was still, you know, on dialysis, you know, and kind of tired and stuff uh, from, you know, from battling the, the, not only the treatment, but like kidney disease and all that taking its toll on my body. You know, it, it was a hard workout. So you got to be physically able to lift these boxes. Uh, like I said, you got to have the room. You got to be willing to listen and learn, learn all the, about the machine, learn about the process. Uh, you got to be uh, able to handle uh, being, you know, having all your supplies on hand um, and being able to do handle the setup. Um, I want to let you guys know. I'm not in any way discouraging anybody from going on home hemo. I'm ba I'm basically just telling you what to expect. Okay. Uh, home hemo was great for me. You know, it was liberating and I was able to uh, do, I, I was able to do more because I could do dialysis on my schedule, on my time. And when I was, uh, you know, when I was ready to do it, I could do it. Uh, I wasn't locked into that TTS schedule. So it was great for me. Right. Uh, I was I was blessed to uh, get the miracle and gift of life of transplant. So I wasn't on home hemo uh, very long. OK, I was on I was on home hemo from May until uh, August. So that was a, that was a very short time. And I was just blessed to be able to get the miracle and gift of life. Uh, to get transplanted. So, um, you know, but I, I still have the knowledge of the home hemo. I'll never forget home hemo. Uh, I'll never forget in center. Um, you know, uh, dialysis uh, will probably always stick with me because, you know, it was what uh, saved my life uh, at the time before I was, you know, able to get the transplant. That was, it was life saving treatment. Uh, so, uh, you know, things that are pros and cons about home hemodialysis, the pros are you're not locked into the schedule. Uh, you know, um, you're like I said, you're able to do it on your time. I noticed that the toxins in my body were not having time to build up in my body uh, as quickly as only on a three, uh, three day a week schedule. I was doing uh, my uh, home hemodialysis treatments. I was doing them five times a week. And each treatment about three hours. OK, so uh, I was getting more treatments. I mean, you're talking about three times four is 12 treatments a month in center. And I was getting 20 treatments a month on home hemo. So the toxins in my body were less because I was getting more treatments. I wasn't carrying as much fluid around uh, because every day I was pretty much getting a treatment except for two days a week. And this is how I did it. I did a treatment Monday, Tuesday, took off on Wednesday night, did a treatment Thursday, Friday, took off usually on Saturday and resumed on Sunday. That's usually how I did it. Uh, I broke it up like that because, you, hey, in the middle of the week, it gave us a break. And then on Saturday, we was able to, you know, have a break, do what we wanted to do on the weekend then come back on Sunday. Usually Sunday night, we would do a treatment. Um that's just the way we did it. And I love that schedule at the, you know, for, for the dialysis. Uh, yes, I did take on two more days of dialysis. Uh, but the benefits were I was no longer locked into that schedule. So that was the con. The con was I took on more treatments. Uh, another con is for home hemo would be, you have to do the cleanup. So you're in charge of the cleanup. You are in charge of also, you know, uh, the setup uh, and all that. So, you know, you, you got to be willing to learn that too and understand that about home hemo is that you have to, you are in charge of, of setting up and the cleanup. Okay. And uh, you, you got to make sure that you're sterile. And you got to make sure that you're cleaning up uh, properly. Got to make sure that you're keeping your machine sterile. OK, and they should be training you in center before you go home, before they release you. They should train you on all of these steps. OK, um, 
also, I want to give you guys some more tips, okay, or just one, a couple more. Uh, if you get in trouble, okay, there's always resources for you. Like I said, you should have the phone number to uh, someone there at your center that trained you. If they're not doing that, then, you know, I mean, they're kind of leaving you out in the cold. And I mean, I'm talking about your people that are training you to do home hemo. If you opt for home hemo, you also have resources with the company next next stage. OK, uh, they have a customer service line. You, you can reach out to them. And if you're having trouble, you're having trouble with the machine, you're having trouble with the alarms. You should call them. OK. Also. Th there's resources online. So there's YouTube videos. There's uh, all kind of information on YouTube. Okay. There's all kind of, uh, instructional, uh, videos, tutorials. Okay. To show you how to do different things. Um, so I want to leave you with that. Uh, also, I want to leave you with, you should also be trained with, uh, to learn how to do if in an in event of an emergency, they call it an emergency takeoff. Okay. Just to let you know, we were trained on that in center. And my first couple of treatments here at the house, uh, we had storms come through. And of course, it knocked the power out. My wife immediately had to go into the emergency takeoff protocol. Um, you will learn all that. Hopefully, your, your center will treat, uh, train you on all these steps and procedures. OK. Um, like I said, you, you got to come accustomed to everything that you're doing you've got to learn it you've got to uh, memorize it okay the more you do the setup the more you you know uh, do each treatment the more you do the cleanup the more you you know set up for the next treatment it becomes a routine and then you know but you got to be willing to to learn it and you got to be willing to stick with it uh, did I have issues and, uh, problems with home hemo? I had a few, I had a couple for sure. Uh, number one, I had three different machines, three. Uh, my first machine worked for about maybe two weeks, had, uh, started throwing a, a certain code every treatment, thought it was something wrong with me, went and talked to the nurse, everything. No, nothing's wrong with you. Uh, your, your, uh, fistula is fine. Everything's clear. OK, so what ended up happening was we found out it was a you know broken machine. I will tell you this. Next stage ended up sending me my machine within 24 hours. So, you know, I never missed a treatment, uh, never missed a treatment. I boxed up the uh, machine and then they had one here by in the morning and I did a treatment that night. Um, you know. I had alarms. We had all kind of uh, things happen. Uh, my, I had buttonholes in my fistula here. Uh, they pretty much healed up now, but I had buttonholes in my fistula. And, my, you know, sometimes we had trouble finding the chute that, uh, you know, because after they stick you, it forms a chute for the needle, for the blunt needle to go in. I had, I, we use blunt needles and, um, uh, you know, we had my wife had a little bit of trouble sometimes getting the uh, the uh, venous and the arterial. OK, the shoots were just kind of difficult sometimes for her to get. Uh, but, you know, we worked through it until until we got it. Uh, there there was times that, you know, my arterial uh, would throw high pressure. And, uh, you know, we had to work with adjusting the, the, the needle and learning how to either flip it over or tape it a certain way. You know, you got to. There's there's techniques and there's ways that you can fix some of these things if you learn the techniques and the tips and the tricks, uh, especially with like using tape and, um, you know, and and uh, making what they call pillows where you take some gauze and, and tuck it underneath the wings and you kind of tape it down. Sometimes it it helps the needle because if the needle, uh, you know, is not laying in the in the vein in the fistula right it'll, it'll clot up or it'll kind of like get up against this, the wall of the vein of the side of the vein and you just won't flow right. You won't have a good flow. So you gotta, you know, you gotta, gotta be knowledgeable of that. Uh, you know, home hemo is not for everybody. Home hemo is not for, uh, you know, every patient. 
uh, it's best for some patients to stay in center. Uh, hopefully, you know, you're, if, you, if you're able, you're adv advocating for yourself and trying to get a, either a living donor or you're waiting on the list to get a deceased donor. Uh, you know, but like I said, if you do, if you do opt to home, go on home hemo, for me, it was a great experience. I enjoyed it. I, uh, you know, while I was on it, of course, I was really waiting for a transplant. And like I said, I was blessed to get the gift of miracle of a transplant. And uh, thanks be to God. I just, you know, I, I didn't have to stay on dialysis. I want to I want to send a shout out and a salute to all the warriors out there that are, um, you know, have been on dialysis, uh, especially home hemodialysis for years. I mean, you guys are true warriors. Um, you guys are strong. You guys are just mentally strong and uh, you guys are amazing. You guys inspire me, uh, you know, and I, I just want to send a shout out to you guys. I just want to send you guys uh, positive vibes and, and just love uh, for, for what you guys go through and what got, what you guys have to do. Like I, I only had the experience for a short, short amount of time. Some of you out there, uh, are, are awesome warriors. And, uh, like I said, I want to salute you guys. Uh, but listen, guys, I'm not going to stay on here much longer. I really appreciate you tuning in. Hey guys, uh, you know, you can find me on, uh, uh hope with Jonathan, uh, podcast. Uh, also, you can find me a Hope with Jonathan on YouTube. Uh, I have all kind of Facebook uh, pages. I have uh, all kinds of social media pages. Uh, you can find me pretty much everywhere. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Twitter. Those are the main three that I'm using right now. I do have some other uh, social medias if you're following out there. Um, again, this is not about me. This is about getting the word out about kidney disease. And uh, different things like such as, you know, home hemodialysis. Uh, I'm also advocating for patients to receive their gift of life. So uh, this is just uh, another show, another, uh, you know, a, a way of just getting the word out. Uh, you guys support uh, Hope with Jonathan. I really appreciate it. All the, all the ones that have been supporting, showing love. Hey, man, I really appreciate you. And uh, to everybody out there that, uh, you know, had a hand in my treatment, Hey, man, God bless you. I really appreciate you. Uh, all, all my other advocate friends and, uh, you know, my mentors out there. Hey, guys, I just want to let you know, I, I see you guys. I see what you're doing. Stay positive. Keep doing what you're doing. And, uh, you know, these patients really appreciate it. Uh, and so all, all the ones out there that are on the waiting list that, uh, you know, are, are waiting, I just want to encourage you to continue to have hope. And uh, I'm sending you out, uh, you know, my prayers and uh, I'm sending you out, you know, positive vibes to you. Uh, just let you know that, you know, God, God is uh, God is able. So uh, just, you know, continue to lean on your support groups and your and your family. If you have family, if you don't, you have friends, your local church, uh, you know, any type of support group, whether it be at a hospital or, uh, you know, wherever, uh, you know, you you got to find support somewhere. And so it's important. But hey, guys, I just want to let you know that I'm praying for you. Hope with Jonathan. Again, hope with Jonathan is not about me. It's about the patient. I'm trying to give you hope. And uh, you guys stay encouraged. God bless. Stay up. Take care. God bless. I'm out.